Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 14-2. This is an interesting topic that is mostly covered in statistics, but does matter a little bit in calculus and in algebra sort of things. So this is the chapter that we're only doing a little bit of on sequences and series. Now a sequence is just a fancy name for a list that we're going to have lists of numbers that we want to find the next one in the list, find the umpteenth one in the list, find the nth one in the list. So there's gonna be a whole lot of words that end in th, where you've got the nth position, which means you find a list and you find number n in the list. And that's a little bit unusual and not something that we're used to saying in English. But fortunately for us, the calculator can do all of this, and we just need to know how to put it into a mode where it will count things that aren't continuous. There's no first and a half thing on the list. There's no first and a third or a 3.9th thing on the list. That doesn't make any sense. So what we need to do is we need to switch modes on our calculator. So here you can see here's the mode setting as it comes. Actually, when you turn it on, it's in radians mode. But we've talked about um, function mode versus parametric mode versus polar mode. Well, it's time for us to use the last one, sequence mode. Sequence mode is when you've got lists of things, and these lists are all called u or v or w, and then in each list, you're calculating the nth thing in that list, okay? So the way this is written in math is little subscripts, but the calculator doesn't have subscripts. It's got parentheses. So that's what we're going to have to use. Now, freaky thing, we're going to go ahead and press the y equals button, but it ain't going to be y equals. Oh, my word, what just happened? What is going on there? What is this? So this is a three-part setup. Just like in parametric, everything required a two-part setup to make one equation. Here, things need a three-part setup, okay? So we've got our list u. So here you can see the little dot dot beside it that this is, these two items here define the list named u. And this italicized n is sort of the counter. As we're counting through the list, we need to know where to begin. Do we start on the first thing? the second thing, the 128th thing, where on the list are we starting? So that's what's gonna be called the n minimum. What's the minimum term? What's the, the smallest item? What's the first important item? Where are we beginning in our list uh, within here? What item are we beginning on? So with the, the default setup is that we're gonna begin on item number one. Now that's not actually usually the case. Mathematicians are weird, and we like to start lists on uh, zero, on item number zero. So you can say the zeroth thing. But let's go with this here first of all. Let's say that the first thing is where we're beginning. We're beginning on item number one. Well, what is item number one equal to? So let's go down here and let's, let's say what item number one is equal to. So suppose, let's just be very, very basic to begin with. You've got a sequence that goes up by one every time, okay? So that means, and, and it starts on one, one. So that means that the first term in our list is uh, the number one. And you can see when I press enter there, it automatically er, adds curly brackets to it. You don't have to do that, it'll do it for you. Now, I'm skipping over the hard one, so let's come back to that and let's do the hard one. What this is saying is if I wanna find the nth term in your sequence, in your list of numbers, how do I calculate that? There are two ways that you could set this up. You could set this up explicitly, or you could set this up recursively. Now, recursive means each item is defined by the item before it. And we're gonna use that most of the time. Explicitly means there's some way to jump instantly to the answer. That if you wanna find out what the hundredth term is in your sequence, that you use the number 100 in a formula somehow, and that'll generate the hundredth term. So that's the difference between explicit and recursive. Recursive is defined by the one before it. Explicit means we can jump straight there, right? So if I wanna find the nth term in uh, sequence u, 
I'm going to say that it is equal to u of n minus 1. I'm making a recursive formula. See how I did that? u, the little lowercase u, is second 7, parentheses, and now my xt theta n button, I'm using it as an n button now in sequence mode. And this, what I have right here is saying any given term is equal to the term before it. See how that translates into e English? u sub n is equal to u sub n minus 1. So if I'm in place number 100, it's equal to place number 99. If I'm in place number 99, it's equal to place number 98. Every single term right now, the way I have it set up, is equal to the term before it. Well, this isn't going to go anywhere. If I want to say that each term is equal to the term before it plus 1, then now I'm going to start having an interesting recursive formula. I'm going to say that this particular term is equal to the term before it plus 1. Well, what's that going to do? Let's go to our table and let's check it out and see what that does. So you can see where we started. We said that when n equal, that the n min is 1 and u of n min was equal to 1 as well. And then each term is equal to the term before it plus 1. Notice, too, we did not define anything before the first term. So the zeroth term is undefined. It gives an error message. Now, we could go and we could make this much more interesting and we could say each term is equal to the term before it times 3. And now if I go back to my table, you can see that we're going up multiplying by 3 every time. That the first term is equal to 1, then this next term is equal to the previous term times 3. And the next term is equal to the previous term times 3. And the next term is equal to the previous term times 3. So this is, this is shooting up like a rocket here. Um, much more common is to use this when you're doing interest rates. So if we were getting 10% uh, we interest, that would be multiplying by 1.1. And we would get a table that looks more like that. Uh, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's get... 95% um, interest, and we can see uh, now, oh, look what happened. I pressed graph instead of table, instead of second graph. And you can see that the graph of a sequence is not a line. It's a bunch of little dots. Like I said, it doesn't exist at the fractional numbers. Let's go ahead and make our window uh, not have any negatives no, no negative x, no negative y, and you can see those dots maybe a little more clearly. All right, so we've talked about the two kinds of uh, formulas being explicit and recursive, and we've said that recursive means define each term by the one before it. We could have two different things that we could be doing there. We could be multiplying, which would mean that we are having a geometric sequence, or we could be adding, which is called an arithmetic sequence. Um, you probably need to look in the book and get, there's just a whole lot of terms that you need to get on page 643 and 644 for this. Explicit, recursive, geometric, arithmetic. Geometric, when they're going up by multiplying, the terms all have a common ratio. Uh, that means if you compared any two terms by division, they would get you the same number every time. Um, in this case, the one that's on the screen still is 1.9 is the common ratio versus if we were having an arithmetic sequence that was going up by addition, they would have a common difference. The difference between any two adjacent terms is always 1.95 in this case. So, see you soon.